How's it going everybody? My name is Infamous Isaac and I'm here with a very special video, alright? I'm gonna be talking about an anime that I haven't watched in a long time, well, for at least like three years or so. And that show is Made in Abyss. Well, m not, not really show, I'm gonna be watching the movies, right? So, I I'll explain in a second, but first, I wanted to talk about something real quick, right? J just a little detour. So, first of all, I actually never showed you guys my skin, I think, or at least like this this in detail or not just glancing over it, I have a Power Ranger skin. I, I don't know why I thought of this, but I just I just remember like I don't think I've ever really talked about it. It's the White Ranger, it's Tommy bro, he's fire. But uh yeah anyway, so the other thing was um dang actually well what was it? What Oh my voice. My voice, right? So you know, everybody has their own way of speaking, right? Everybody has their own dialect, their own vocal inflections, their own high pitch, low pitch, you know, morning voice, whatever. And you have your internal voice, which is what you hear when you speak. Like when I'm speaking right now, I can hear myself because, you know, it's coming from my mouth so I can hear it reverberate through my body. But everybody has their own way of interpreting their own voice. But when you hear it recorded and how other people hear your voice, it sounds completely different because you're not hearing it from inside your body. You're hearing it from other people's perspective. So it's just like everybody thinks that their voice sounds terrible. And I used to be like that too. But now now that I hear it, it's just like, yeah, I mean, this is my voice. I can try to make it deeper, but in reality, I don't I don't really I can't. <laughs> that that's just how my voice is, how my vocal cords are. So, you know, I just gotta live with them, right? So might as well make the most of them. Besides, I think my voice is fine. When I when I when I whisper or when I just talk normally, which is basically a whisper, it doesn't really. Uh, y yeah, honestly, I mean, I don't really mind the way it sounds when it's like that. So, you know, but enough of that. That that was basically a rant. So, basically, I'm gonna be covering the uh, Main and Abyss movies. Well, I'm gonna be covering the first one in this part, and what I'm gonna try to do is. I'm going to record this part for the first movie. I'm going to record the second part when I watch the second movie. I'm going to try to combine them so I don't have to split the videos up into two. I want to have them be like just one long video instead of being two separate videos. So I probably should start talking about the show now so that I can actually make it uh, a normal, concise thing. But yeah, that that's going to be the plan. If I still have time to talk about it, I'll, uh, I'll explain it later at the end of the video, the whole video. But yeah, Made in Abyss, right? I'm watching movie one. I think it's Journey to the Dawn. I think it's what it's called. And it's a recap of episodes one through eight for the for the show, for the anime, right? And Made in Abyss itself is a... Oh, actually, okay, okay. The, this movie is a two-part duology for the recaps. There you go. I forgot to mention that. But the, the, this series is a, is a show that I got recommended by one of my friends back in like 2019 when it came out. And I gave it a watch. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to give you guys my opinion of, of that show right now. I loved it. I thought it was great. It was a show that very very few shoe, or very few shows could like achieve. And I don't mean like, uh, oh, it's amazing. It's just something for me personal. This show managed to make me cry in a time where I was not crying whatsoever. So like, before I started watching One Piece, there were only like a few shows that I could count. That actually made me cry and like genuine tears it made me feel a crazy emotion like level of sadness that I hadn't before because of a show it was um Dragon Ball Z when uh, they were on planet Namek and Vegeta spoiler he uh, he got blasted by Frieza and he died then there's uh, this show which I won't say why I cried until I get to that part and then there's uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans, which was a show I got recommended by one of my friends, which honestly I should have talked about, but I didn't think about it. But one of the scenes in the second season made me cry like crazy, bro. So, you know, the, the this show is up there with one of the greats that, like, to me personally, affected me on an emotional level like that. Because after I started watching One Piece, like, uh, I, I would cry like every arc on that show. And it unlocked a... Uh, Kind of like the the waterworks, the dam that was blocking my tears and my 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 sadness when I'm when I'm watching shows. It made me it made it so I could feel more emotions when I watch it. So now I get even more hype, even more sad. I feel more when I watch shows. 
and this was one of the shows that I felt during that period of mine. So the show definitely means a lot to me. It's a uh, it's something that I want to give great care to talk about, like through this video. But yeah, so to to give a a little summary slash like synopsis of it, the, this show is based in a world completely different from ours. It's kind of like fantasy, like uh, dystopian or not n not dystopian, but more like completely different, just completely different from our world, where there's this country that the main characters live in that has a giant hole. And I, when I mean like a hole, I legit mean like a ravine that, that spans down to like the, what would be like the Earth's core. Like it is vast and it is deep. Like, and you don't, you don't understand how vast it is until you get a giant shot of it in the show. Oh, in the movie, I guess, actually, now that I'm talking about it. It's, it's big. And the, the, the characters, uh, Rico, or uh, Rico, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce her name. It's just R-I-K-O. Rico is a, a girl who lives in the, 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 the highest part of the abyss, so where human civilization can flourish, where you can live without any complications, right? And she's there trying to learn to be a, an excavator, basically, to get uh, materials and relics and all that from the abyss, which is what it's called. And you, I, I saw a comment. It was like, why don't they just make like uh, scout drones or whatever, or use technology? And the reason they don't do that is because they don't have the technology. They they have the technology to be able to go down into deeper lefts or deep deeper levels, like you know, like normal cave excavation. But they don't have the materials for machinery, like that advanced. So, if you find like a a machine that's really advanced, it's more like a relic than it is like a relic and an exception more than it is an actual like a, an ambas an advancement excuse me so yeah I, I need to state that before i continue but basically rico is in this town trying to learn to become a a, a salvager slash excavator and her and her friends are just going about living their lives she's trying to be able to go down farther and farther because they have levels of like uh red whistle, blue whistle, so on and so forth, till you get to black whistles and white whistles, which are like the top two, the top uh, the the top dogs of excavation. Those people go down to like the, the deepest levels. And there's uh, seven levels. There's number one, which is the, the safest, number two, which you start getting a little crazy, where like you start getting nauseous, dizzy, headaches, all that. Number three, things start getting a little crazy. Number four, you know, that's, that, that's like the, well, no, number five is, but number four, things start getting even crazier. Number five is where it's like the safest point to actually ever return. Like if you go down to number five, that is like the lowest point you can go without dying from like trying to come back to the surface is what I'm trying to say. Number six, nobody like, nobody, <laughs> nobody can really say that they, they've come back unscathed because this is where like your whole humanity is altered well uh five is as well but literally you will come back a completely different person if you stay there for long it's hard to live there like humans are affected on a whole different scale when they go down to the abyss and in seven i don't think anybody's gone there so but we we learned that rico's mom liza actually went down to the sixth level and she came back and she had like a her her husband i think husband or wife i don't i can't really tell uh, their, their 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 partner with them, and they had another person, Ozen, who was uh, another sca scavenger, or salvager, excuse me. And Liza, we don't know where she is. Uh, the her partner is dead. We know that for sure. And Ozen is still alive. But Rico is a uh, Liza's child, and we know that for sure because one of the people in the school, a leader, told us that. And as Rigo is going down to like the first level to explore, since that's where she's allowed to go, since she's a red whistle, we find another person. I mean, the, the other main character, uh, Reg. And as Rico uh, finds him, she takes him back to her her room in the orphanage because she's an orphan. Since her mother, we don't know where she is. They 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 excuse me. They start to learn more about him. Start to learn that he's not really human. He's more like artificial. But it's hard to say if he really is artificial. He's a more like a relic for certain. But you know, 
he he spends some time with them. He he manages to convince the leader to stay with them. Did, he doesn't know, or at least like we think that he doesn't know, that they they found him and that he, they want him to stay here. So he just let him stay. And Reg, Rico, Nat, Shiggy, and what the little kid's name are all hanging out, enjoying themselves for two months. Then uh, two months pass, and we see Uncle Habo, which is Rico's uh, uncle. He he comes up, gives Rico uh, his mom or her mom's whistle, and they realize like this is one of the last things that we could find of her. Doesn't mean that she's dead, but it just means that we can't find her. We don't know where she is. So uh, Uncle Habo gives her some stuff, and this sparks her curiosity and desire to go back down to the the pit or to go down to the pit. And she convinces the others, or she doesn't convince the others. She's like, I want to go down there. Nat is like, no. She's like, yes, and they start arguing. Reg is like, all right, I mean, I'll go with you. And Shiggy's like, all right, let me help you guys understand what is down there. Like, things are crazy down there, okay? And basically, Nat, Shiggy, uh, Shiggy, by the way, S-H-I-G-G-Y. I'm not trying to say Shuggy like Shigoki from For Honor. But uh, the four of them go down there to like uh, uh, an excavation point in the slums where they can go down without having to worry about security. And Nat said something horrible to uh, Rico, talking about how he just believes her mother is dead. That caused the rift between them, but he apologized and now they're all good. And the worst part about all this is that like, I didn't explain it too well, but trying to come back from the abyss is way harder than trying to go down. You can go down, you have ways to like skip some parts in the early beginning, but once you try to go up, like the nausea really hit, hits. Like you, your body is affected way more by the curse of the abyss than it is by going down. Like going up is dangerous, if not deadly. Or even in the early stages. So it's hard to. It's definitely hard to. And that's something that she has to learn. That it's going to be a, a big factor in this. Because Rico's only 12. She's only 12 years old. Like, So it's going to be affecting her even more than it is an adult. Like an adult start feeling crazy, crazy symptoms. Like around the fourth layer. So it's going to be even worse for her. But... Rico, we learned that she was actually born in the abyss because her mother was in the abyss while she had her. And she had to be carried in a, a relic that kind of houses a child who can, or someone who can, well, it can it can deflect kind of like the, the, the curse of the abyss. So they, they should be fine, but we'll learn later on what happened in it. So basically, Rico was born in the abyss. And now she got brought up to, to the surface by Liza after her second to last expedition and at her last one she left Rico here and she grew up here by herself with uh, Liza's apprentice leader or whatever his name is I don't remember but yeah so Rico and Reg go down they leave their buddies they wish them good luck and if they never see them again they just then they should know that they're attached to each other by the abyss so they'll never truly forget each other they go down they go to the first layer they meet Uncle Habo, um, oh, again, because he kind of showed up and he was like, yo, I came looking for you guys because your friends told me to tell you something. And before that, actually, before they met Uncle Habo, uh, Rico got a, a letter from Reg where it's like, yo, a leader told me to give you this because before they set out on their expedition, leader caught Reg in the bathroom and he was like, yo, uh, protect Rico, all right? And he inserted a, a letter into his pants. And it says, if we catch you, you're not leaving. <laughs> so it was basically a test. Like, if you get caught, you're not going to leave. <laughs> you're staying here. So that was the whole mission, to not get caught. And Hobble immediately caught them, but he wasn't there to catch him. It was more like he just saw them. And he wanted to tell them something. So Habo gave him some medicine. Or Rico some medicine because she's human, uh, Reg isn't, she needs it to go down to the second layer, and he's like, well, I wish you luck, your mom should be waiting for you down there, it's uncertain if she is, 
but I know for certain that only you would be the one to be able to find her. Good luck. And he leaves. He goes, and Rico and Reg go down to the second layer. The, the first layer has some birds going on. It shows Reg with his uh, crazy Iron Man arm. It's so fire. I love it. And, you know, after that, they go down to the second layer. We realize because of this, though, that Reg has a, a cooldown whenever he uses his uh, arm cannon, his Mega Man cannon slash repulsor beam, where if he shoots it, he he only has 10 minutes before he uh, he passes out for two hours. So it's a, it's definitely a last resort that he needs to use sparingly. And that's something that he learns later on. So they go on down to the second layer and they meet Ozen and Maruk, who is uh, her uh, apprentice. Uh, Ozen is like, oh, you're Liza's daughter. All right, you can, you can stay here for a little bit. And they stay there. They learn some stuff about Maruk and all that and Ozen and how she she found him or found them and is now taking care of them and that how this is a a, a raider like hideout so the, this is where they all stay and uh some things happen uh ozen is like hey you want to see something and they're they're like sure they go to one of the hideouts and it's a relic the relic that uh what's her face rico was carried in and they realize or Ozen tells him, "Yo, you weren't, you weren't uh, repelling the curse when you were in there. You completely died to it. You should have been dead. You you were stillborn. But the thing brought you back to life. So it's uncertain if even like, if you're even allowed to live any longer because she put a meat like a uh, a bag of meat in there and it started walking as well. But it wasn't long before it died." So, Rico, it's uncertain if she even has a lot of time to live or not. So, uh, th this obviously destroys her. And Reg starts fighting uh, Ozen because she's getting really brolic. Like, really, really brolic. And so, they start fighting. Reg is no match for her because she is, uh, like, like, she has inhuman strength. Completely inhuman. And Reg uses his cannon at her. And he passes out. Then he wakes up next to Rico. Uh, with that, uh, with the other bandits, and Ozen is looking at him. They and they realize, oh shoot, she was actually testing them. That she like she 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 wasn't being mean on purpose. Well, she was, but more like she was doing it because she was testing them. So there wasn't anything bad going on. And she's like, all right, well, I mean, you have three weeks until the next raiders come back. So. Uh, I'll I'll try to train you before then, and she sends them out into a forest for ten days, where they have to survive, and for ten days they have to work out their kinks, try to be better as teammates because they're they have great chemistry, but they have their horrendous downsides. You know, Rico is very gung ho, headstrong, but she, her body can't take it. While uh, what's his face is the opposite. Reg is the opposite, where he's his body is strong, but he's not gung ho. He's very nervous and second guesses himself a lot. So they have to make up for those uh, faults together. Since actually they do cover their weaknesses pretty well, but they come back after ten days. They're talking to Ozen and they're learning more. They realize like, oh yeah, your mother isn't dead, or at least like any sign of her being dead is false, because there was a grave in the fourth layer that Ozen went to. And she thought, oh, the, this must be Liza. Checks the grave, it's not her. There's no body in it. So she's like, well, if you go to find your mother, then I mean, good luck. Because I don't even know if she's alive or not. And if she is, then you're the only one that can find her. So Rico's like, thank you, I'll do it. And Reg is like, all right, well, I guess I got to work on my arm so I don't use it all the time. Because I'm the only one that can really protect Rico. So it's just like, all right. We got to get out of here. They have a big send off for Rico and all of them. Ozen is not there because she's, you know, very edgy. And Ozen herself really shows like uh, how it can affect people because she she has scars all over her head that are from the abyss because the abyss has mental like it, um, it, it affects you mentally, but it doesn't 
just stop it affecting you mentally. If you stay there long enough, it will start affecting you physically as well. So she covers up her scars for her hair. But also we learn more about her and Liza's relationship, how Ozen is really, really old. To the point where she was alive when uh, Liza was still just a kid or whatever. And she witnessed her grow up. And now she's witnessing Rico grow up and everything. So it's like she has a affection towards her a little bit. She's very uh, devout to her duty of protecting Rico a little bit and getting her ready to go down. So they they leave, they go down to the third layer, and that's where the third movie ends. Or excuse me, the first movie ends. And now I'm going to be going into the second one, which is going to be depression, because I remember what happens in this one. But yeah, I'll be back when the second movie is done, and hopefully I can fit the second movie into this video so I don't have to cut it out and make it two videos. So yeah, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back from watching it. Uh, for you guys, not going to seem different at all, but for me, I've been gone for two hours. But yeah, so I watched the second movie. I'm going to add it on to this part of the video since the first part's only 20 minutes. And yeah, let, let me talk about it, right? So the first movie ends off with them going down to the third layer after, you know, being at the second one. And they're traversing it. The third, The third layer isn't too deep at least like in terms of the movie it's not it's not that lengthy it's only like 10 minutes probably 15 at the most but they go through it easy it's a it's a round like well not round but it's very flat so you have to go through inside of the of the thing itself instead of going outside traversing it but they they get down there they go to the fourth layer and this is the the goblet of giants because there's a bunch of like lily pad like things that that just like stand up from the ground and they look like goblets and so they're goblets for giants and all that but they're they're going down reg and rico are going through it and they 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 try to walk on top of one of the goblets to try to get through but an orb piercer shows up which is basically a porcupine like animal that has uh poison tips and it uses its face to sense like movement and all that so it's very accurate and it has like uh ozen said I, I didn't mention it but these animals as you go deeper and deeper down are really intuitive to the point where like they rival human intuition like the what the what they're thinking and all that like they're very very smart but they meet one of these and they have to fight it but it realizes that the the blaze reap blaze reaper whatever it's called the 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 scythe that they have is very strong so they he he kicks it away from them and now they have to fight without it rico gives uh reg an umbrella it does nothing because once the the or piercer pierces the umbrella it also pierces rico's hand and it's like i said it's poison they have to run but the only way for them to run is for them to ascend a little bit further so they can get away from it and they do they ascend, but at the cost of the fact that ascending with Rico is close to death, like legit. This the the problem with that with ascending here is like the first one you get dizzy, all right. The the second one you get nausea, headaches, you feel weird. The third one you start bleeding out of your orifices, so it's a it's a pretty big leap from the the nausea. So she's poisoned, she starts bleeding, and um, what's it called? They have to find a way to sever. Well, they, they have to find a way to stop the poison. And Rico's idea is to sever the arm. So now Reg has to deal with the fact that he has to sever her arm. Try to find a way to stop the poison and keep her alive as well. And he's struggling. He's struggling. He's crying. He's going through all of it. And luckily somebody shows up. Uh, a furry bunny-like creature. Whose name is Nanachi. Or Nanachi. Whichever one you prefer. And she shows up and she's like, hey, uh, I'll help you guys out. Just stop crying. So she takes them over to her hut. And they manage to save Rico by having Reg go look for some ingredients. And once Rico and, uh, oh, well, once now that she starts taking care of Rico and all that, her and Reg start talking and all that. And this leads to them me meeting Mitty. M-I-T-T-Y, 
which is one of uh, Nan Nanachi's friends, but there's a story to her. She's basically a, uh, a human who lost her humanity. And there, there will be an explanation for that later on when I talk about it. But Midi has no, like, thought. There's not a single, a single thought in her head. She's uh, kind of like a, a very, like, imagine taking out a human skeleton and it's just flat, like, uh, flat skin and meat. And the mouth is sideways, like, well, it's horizontal, or it's vertical more than it is horizontal. That's what Midi, Midi looks like. She's a she's a creature who can't die by normal means unless if she's completely vaporized and atomized. So, um, what's it called? Rag and uh, Nanachi are going through it. They're they're trying to get uh, Rico back to health, and we learn more about Nanachi through this process. But she's like, all right, uh, let me help you out real quick. If you want to take down that ore piercer, I'll help you do it. You just gotta listen to me, alright? And before that, she was also telling him about all the... Um, what's it called? All the tech that you need for the Abyss, right? Like how the Abyss, the curse of it, it's not like it surrounds you the entire... Well, it is like it surrounds you every time you go down, but it's it's like more like a, a trap, right? Like a spike trap with spikes at the bottom of it. And the reason that they're at the bottom it's because when you descend into the abyss, it's fine. It's easy as like cutting through butter when you enter it. There's no problem. But when you try to ascend, that's when the weight comes into it, right? That's when you have to go through the spikes and your body has to be able to endure the horrors of it. Like uh, when, when Rico started bleeding, that was her trying to go through the curse. Because the way that they compared it was like a, a sheet. A uh, veil, kind of, where you have to pass through the veil to get out, but it's a lot harder to pass through than it is to pass or pass through it to get out than it is to pass through it to get in. So that's why it's so difficult and it's so strenuous on the on the body, especially when you go down to the fifth and sixth level, where if you try to go back up, you legit lose your humanity. You start morphing into a different creature why why some things happen to others that are completely different from what happened to Nanashi and I'll explain later. But yeah, so the Red goes to fight the Orpuser again. He meets somebody, a, a black whistle, who uh went down there and he's going to ascend. He he helps defeat the the Orpuser, not kill it because it, it still has his intuition, its instinct. But enough to the point where it won't come back to the fourth layer. So he saves the black whistle. He goes to tell him, like, yo, I have a message for you. If you go back up to the surface, go to this orphanage and tell this person we're doing good. The journey continues. The marathon continues. He's like, oh, okay. All right, later. And so he goes back to Nanachi. And then we learn about Nanachi's past because... Uh, Reg had to use his uh, repulsor beam to take out the 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 ore piercer enough, so he's basically knocked out. But once he wakes up, we hear about her past, right? And her past is basically, she lived in a foreign country, but bes uh, besides the one that we're in right now, where she was homeless, she was poor, orphanage type thing, very very terrible life. And a white whistle. Name, uh, I, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I, uh, I don't know. He's a guy with like a weird like Saint fourteen looking helmet, without the without the froze on the top, and he's a white whistle. But uh, he comes over and he's just like, "Yo, if you guys are not afraid of the abyss, come over, and we can go explore it together." And oh, here we. A bunch of children go through it. A bunch of children go through exploring it. Well, okay, okay, okay. A bunch of a bunch of children go down there. First of all, I actually have to, I actually have to say that a bunch of children go down there, and they're all kept in a facility on the sixth layer. So they're all there, and uh, Nanachi, on the process, meets her friend, Mi or Midi. Yeah, she meets her through that process, and now they're friends. So as things are going on. 
the group of kids gets smaller and smaller to the point where it's only like six people. And Mitty and Nanachi are one of the last few. To the point where Nini and uh, Mitty and Nanachi are the last two. Mitty gets called up first and Nanachi wonders what's going to happen to her. And she goes uh, to look for her out of curiosity. And she sees that she's kept in a test tube. And the, the white whistle, uh, I, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Uh, he shows up behind her and he's like, oh, you're here just in time. Why don't you take a, a step into the tube? We're about to commence the experiment. And what's revealed is that he's been using these children, these orphans, to uh, conduct tests on how to pass the curse of losing your humanity or just straight up dying. So he uh, he's using these children to test that, to see what you can really do. How can you change it and all that, or prevent it even. And oh. they both get into the tube and we, we find out that Midi is going to be the one who gets the curse, and Anachi is going to be the one who is supposed to survive it. So if Midi dies, Nanachi will die. And that's what has to happen, right? And they get dropped down because the test tubes lead to an underground chamber. And the underground chamber shows hundreds, hundreds of children deformed and transformed into creatures like creatures who lost their humanity they have no thoughts going on in their head it's all instinctual there's not a single thought going on in there and it's just a pile of them a pile of them one on top of another and it's dark and it's nasty they get down there and they realize oh shoot she's gonna die and she's telling uh, nana she like yo it's it's all right once uh once i get transformed I hope I, I pass on and my soul comes over to you. And then they get back brought up or they get brought back up with the elevator tube thing. And we see the whole thing. We see the whole thing from her transforming into a, into this uh, deformed creature. And then you have Nanachi who's transforming into the, the furry bunny who we know today. They get back brought up and or they get Bought, brought back up, and now they're they're there, transformed and all. And she was used, and now she was used for a bunch of experiments. Same with Mitty, to learn why did this happen, why did she live, but not, uh, Mitty didn't. And later on, like uh, a a little bit later, Nanachi makes an escape and she leaves, but. The white whistle lets it happen. He just lets her go. And she goes up to the fourth layer. And that's where she's been staying at for the past, like, amount of time that she's been there. <laughs> so then this leads to the question of, can Reg kill Mitty? Because he has the incinerator, the vaporizer. And Reg, it, it's difficult for him to say this because he's killing somebody's friend. He's, he's pulling them out of their misery. And while, while Rico's still passed out, they take Mitty outside after like a couple days of deliberation. Reg gets ready to kill her. And he does it. He vaporizes her after a lot of deliberation and very, uh, very sad scenes. So after that, he wakes up and he, and he sees Rico back up healthy and all. And Rico talks about her dream that she had and how Mitty was in it. She she never met Mitty because she was sick all the way until she died. Or until Mitty died. So she never got to meet her personally. But Mitty was all over uh, Rico when she was asleep. She got really amicable with her. And what's it called? They're, they're, they're talking about it. She's talking about her dream and how crazy it was. It was terrifying. And... They get ready. They get ready to leave. Uh, they have to take out the mushroom in Rico's arm that was used to stop the poison and the fact that it was broken. And they also have to, uh, what's it called, prepare. Because they got pretty messed up going down to the fourth layer. So they have to make new bags, get new clothes, 
and just reestablish how they're going to go through the mission. And along the way, Nanachi joins the group. She gets asked by Rico, and she's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. I can't, I can't go to the other world just yet. I just have to see this through. And they all get ready. They send a package up through the, the abyss, do the updraft. They send it to the second layer, and they send it to the, to the top of the abyss where the, the people are, where Nat and all of them are. And we see a final scene where the White Whistle, years after Nanachi escaped, is talking about how uh, Midi died. Because he has the, the lights that show their, their, their current like status, their, their health, I guess. And Michi's is turned off, but Nanachi's is still there. Or Midi, excuse me. I'm having so, such a hard time trying to talk about it. But um, he's like, oh, I guess he killed her. And we find out that he actually has a daughter. And that's where the movie ends, leaving us to watch the third movie. And man, let me tell you, I, when I said that um, I was going into depression, I wholeheartedly meant it. Like, I knew when I was going into this part that it was, it was going to be depressing. Like, super, super, super depressing. It was going to hit all the, the, the wrong strings make me feel really emotional and just really tug on your heart cords like man this is rough to watch this is really rough to watch and I remember watching it um when I was younger like I thought the same thing uh episodes 9 through 13 are some of the hardest episodes to watch it's difficult it's really difficult but it's great like this this little section of the of the show elevates the show from a seven to a whole nine like this this section is amazing and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second but this show like if i had to rate it it's a whole nine it's great it's amazing but um like uh the beginning of the show what 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 had me really interested is the premise like uh oh actually hold on before i talk about that um so me and uh or I watched it because a friend recommended it to me. He said, this show is really good. I watched it. I thought it was great. And I told Reaper, like, hey, yo, you should watch this show. And this was a while ago. This is like a, a year or two ago. He watched it. He thought the same thing. This show was great. And now we're rewatching it because season two is already out, right? So we're getting prepared for that. And going back through it, I, I realized, like, the premise of this show is really cool. It's unlike any show I've ever watched before with the premise. Like, uh, you know, there's probably stuff out there that I, I can find that be like, oh, yeah, this is kind of like it. But this show, like, the only comparison that I can think of is, like, the Studio Ghibli animation. But that's it. Because the animation is beautiful. But I don't think it's made by Studio Ghibli. Like, I don't think at all. But, like, this show is so unique in what it is with the, the whole premise of going down in the abyss to explore all of it and uh, the curses, the different terrains and environments and wildlife and creatures and the fact that like uh, only like less than 10% of the creatures have actually been named and identified is crazy. It's actually crazy. It, it reminds me of like the our, our oceans on Earth, how we know more about space then we do our own oceans or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember how true that statement is, but we don't know a lot about our oceans. I know that for, I know that's for certain because there's so many things down there and, uh, and, and the pressure of going down there and actually living is crazy. It's actually crazy. So it reminds me of that. I think it's super cool. Like that whole idea and the, the, the setting for it, the premise again I, I i have to reiterate that it's awesome and it's nothing like i've ever seen before even my favorite shows like have never uh interested me in the idea of it this much like one piece you know it's a pirate show but i've seen pirates before like full Metal alchemist brotherhood right it's a it's a show about alchemy and that type of time period but you know there's uh there's other shows like that or at least like with with a, a similar idea in alchemy and in steinsgate you know time travel 
I've seen shows like that before. They all do it their own unique way, but it's an idea that I've heard about or at least like seen before. But this idea I've never seen before. Even when I watched it back then, I never seen a, a show like this ever. And it's amazing. It's unique. And does that make it better? To whoever you ask, not really. But to me, it it, it elevates it so much because of how unique the idea is. But uh, you know, the beginning of the beginning of the episode or the show from like episode one through eight, it's good. Like it definitely kept me engaged and I was interested in it. It was fun to watch. It was interesting. It was dope. Because we don't know much about it, but the 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 first and second layer are really just primers to what you're about to see in the third and fourth layer, and we haven't even seen the fifth and sixth layer yet, at least like in in, in my watch yet. So it's really just it shows how different they are down there. It's not it's not a joke. It was legit, not a game. You you can die and you will die if you do not take it seriously. And and our characters had to experience that. Like the, the the first and second layer, you know, they were they were goofing around, they were having a good time. They wanted to go down there, but they didn't realize how dangerous it really was, what they were getting themselves into. And they got and they got by by the fact that they had help. But if they didn't have help on the third and fourth layer, they would have been dead. Wholeheartedly dead. They got lucky that they survived. And that's something that's gonna be in lingering in in the show and in the movies with the, the fact that uh, Rico has a scar now. A very, very prominent scar that is a reminder, like, we lived because we had help. And we got lucky. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. Because these are only 12-year-olds, bro. These are legit only 12-year-olds going through this. It's terrifying. Even adults don't know how, how deep, like, this goes. Like, the, the only thing I could really think about, now that I, now that I try to think about it, uh, it's like the, the dark continent, right? Where instead of exploring uh, outward with the dark continent, where you're learning more about these different creatures, you're exploring downward, downward into like the, the the planet and all that, seeing what goes down there, learning about all the creatures there. And with the dark continent is that we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen anything on the dark continent. The pacing is terrible. Well, you know, the arc itself is good, but the pacing is terrible. But here we're actually seeing what we don't know. We're learning about it. We're, we're growing with it. With the Dark Continent, we haven't seen anything yet. We're, yet, we're still on the boat. Oh, spoilers for that, by the way. But, um, yeah. So, this this show, like, it just has so much to show. But it doesn't show a lot of it. It takes its time showing it. And that really has me engaged. And I love it for that. I... I'm so interested to see what happens in the third movie because man, it's difficult to watch. Yeah. If you if you like if you're struggling, if you have depression or something like that, or just are sad in general, or are not in a happy mood, like th this is gonna be difficult to watch. Yeah. I I really advise to either watch it with somebody or watch it when you're in a good mood, because if you're watching this when you're depressed, yo, it's it's rough. Like it's it's so hard to watch alone when you're in that mental state. It's difficult, man. But I can't recommend it enough. This show is great. The show is wholeheartedly great. I love it. And I'm glad I went through to rewatch it. Like, I, obviously, I didn't watch the, the, the show to rewatch it. I watched the movies. But the movies, I feel like, don't sacrifice too much. They, like, the, the first movie, I felt like the pacing was a little weird. Because I felt like we were going through it so fast. But that's because I watched the show originally. And there's 13 episodes to flesh everything out. While you have like four, almost four hours of content, of runtime, compared to, say, 4, 48, uh, 62, I think? No, 72. So, you have like an hour and 30. Oh, excuse me, an hour and 30 for three episodes. You have nine episodes, you have 12. So... 1 hour and 30, 2 hour and 30, 3 hour and 30, 4 hour and 30, and then, huh, oh man, alright, I'm gonna go lie to you, that's probably like 6 to 8 hours from what I can count, <laughs> 6 to 8, maybe even 10 hours, but it's, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of time that you have to invest into it. 
but it's worth it. Like watching the show was worth it. So condensing that into uh, four hours and it still being good is a, is a feat. It's a it's legit a feat that is hard to pull off, but they did it. And I saw some comments on it, like when I was watching it, like, you know, this movie kind of fixes like the pacing issue that the show has because it can be really slow, and I can understand that. The considering how many episodes there are and how far they made it in one season, they only made it to the fourth layer, which, in the grand scheme of things, if you had like a shonen, that that would be a lot of progress. But considering how short the the show really was, that that's not a lot. With what they were doing, because they had so many distractions, of course it wasn't a lot, you know. But the the pacing that some the, the that some people had issue with was fixed here. For me, I didn't care about the pacing because I was invested in it. So no matter how slow it went, as long as it wasn't like a, a snail's pace, the animation was good and the story was good, then I, I didn't mind, you know. And that's what that's what it was. But the movies kind of filled up for that. So I'm perfectly fine with it. I got the same story, just a little more condensed with some extra scenes. You know, I don't mind it. So if you want to watch the show again, then I definitely recommend watching these movies if you want to rewatch it for season two. But if you want to watch it like completely new experience and you have the time for it, I recommend watching the show. Wholeheartedly recommend watching the show. So you can get every bit as attached to these characters as you do with the movie. And, you know, watching the scenes, like the new added scenes is good and all. But I feel like you should do that after you watch the show because it makes them better. And it enhances the show it, uh, like more than what it does with just watching the movies. So the the show is the more complete experience, but the, the movie is a good enough uh, justifiable experience. It, it, it has reason to be here. But, um, yeah, so next is going to be the third movie, which continues on the second season, basically. Like, uh, consider the third movie, The Mugen Train, like Demon Slayer. That's basically what's going to happen. So, I can't wait to see it, you know? I uh, mean, let me talk about the, the animation. It's beautiful. Godly, actually. Well, not godly. Uh, it's really, really good. It's, uh, I can't understate it enough. This animation is amazing. The people who created it are I don't know what they do with their spare time, but they, they just draw, draw, and draw if 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 they have the time for it. Because they're really good artists. Um the the story is great. I, I, I love the story. It's uh really interesting. It keeps me in, invested. The the setting, the the time period, everything going on. It's not bound by one thing. It just keeps going. It's super cool. The characters, they're great. I love uh, the main three that we have now. Ozen was cool. Liza, we don't know much about her, but she's cool. You have Uncle Habo, I think. He was cool. Leader, he was cool. All these characters, you know, they were cool. There's not, like, one character where I'm just like, oh, jeez. only thing I really have is, like, uh, Nanachi's voice. It's a little weird sounding in Japanese. It really has that nasally, like, yeah type sound to it. So it can get kind of grating sometimes. But it's a... Uh, I got used to it, so, you know, I don't mind it as much anymore. And Ozen, her voice is really weird, too, because she talks so slow. So slow and so, like, deep. But I, I got used to it, too, I guess. You know, it's just some nitpicks with those more than there's actual problems. But, yeah, you know, the, the voice actors, amazing. I actually never talk about the voice actors, but the voice actors here are amazing. So, like, so much so that I have to mention them. They're great. They're actually great. Um, music, godly. I love it. It's amazing. I, uh, I can actually remember the music. Like, some of the scenes wouldn't be as good if the lack of music or the amount of music was or wasn't there. It was, it, oh man, it just enhanced it so much. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, overall, or pacing, yeah, pacing, it was good. Pacing, it was really good with the movies. I actually should talk about that later, but. Yeah, you know, overall, again, I give this a whole nine. Uh, I'm probably going to call this, like, me praising this T-series or whatever. But, yeah, you know, hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to be back next time with the third movie. And then hopefully later on I can talk about the, the whole season. Since, you know, that's coming out, releasing through this summer. That's going to be fire. But I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching, as always. If you enjoyed the 
this series or these movies, please let me know in the comments below. And if you didn't, let me know why you didn't, you know? I'm always interested to hear why people don't like things or why they do like things that I don't like. So, you know, let me know down below. And uh, I hope you all, in or yeah, I already said that. I'll check you all out. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you all when I'm back with this series. Peace.